First off, I Thank want to you. talk about India. It's going gangbusters. It's become the darling of investors. Uh, can that momentum continue if China gets its act together? Well, uh, we have been there before, where India has been going gangbusters and we've not done a great job of it. But I think given the current dispensation of the government and how they are uh, embracing this particular opportunity and how they've gone about, you know, from a geopolitical perspective to how they manage the economy, how they opened it up, how they engage with the business partners globally, I think India is definitely much better place than before to get this right. We have elections coming up in May 2020, you know, this year, and we expect, the, we expect the current government to continue to come back to power. And given all those factors which are... Uh, you know, aligning in favor of India. It should be helpful uh, for India to really achieve some of the goals and some of the aspirations. What kind of about. growth can we see in India? So if you Sustainable. See well, people are talking about we are, our economists are revising the growth to upwards of 7%. Maybe the next year it could come down a little bit depending on how some of the global factors play out. But India has now definitely reached uh, the zone of 6 to 7.5% growth. Can we sustain it? I think, as, as you rightly said, things are aligning in favor of India. You mentioned China. Yes, China is struggling through. I'm sure the Chinese government will take all the action necessary to ensure that the growth is back. But growth coming back to any part of the world economy is not necessarily bad for India. It is good for India. I think ultimately China uh, is a competition to India, but at the same time, anything which uplifts the global economy is good for all the countries what around the world. What could go wrong for India then? Well, global turbulence is something which I, we all worry about. It's unpredictable. Uh, things are happening around the world which no one could have even imagined six months back. Uh, any kind of global slowdown will obviously impact our exports. They account for 15% of our GDP. Uh, we also have to be aware of the fact that the interest rates in the, you know, uh, emerging markets and generally the uh, you know, better economies of the world will remain higher for a long period of time because, in, for example, U.S. has moved from a very you know, loose fiscal and a tight monetary policy to exactly the opposite. And given what is going on there, we expect the interest rates to remain higher for some period mm -hmm. of time. The people are pricing in a Fed cut. India, given its inflation, will keep interest rates higher. And in, in, a, in a high interest rate environment, it does impact economic growth at some stage. So we have to be careful about that. But otherwise, as I said, I think Things are generally lining up for India. I mean, Tap, Indian banks are also doing well now that they've cleaned up their bad loans. Deposits, such great competition in that space. But you're lagging behind. How are you looking to catch up to your bigger rivals? So, firstly, I don't think we're lagging behind. We'd like to do much better. So, in that sense, yes, uh, if you were to say I was lagging behind, yes, we are. But you know, right now, the deposit growth in the country itself has been constrained because RBI is playing a role of, you know, just tightening the whole system a little bit. They need to get the inflation down, and they believe that it is very important for them to have a keep tight rein on the kind of liquidity in the system. Uh, all the other three factors which could potentially add to the deposits, uh, you know, the reduction of cash in the system, the reduction of balances, which the government has with RBI, which tend to suck deposits out, or the credit growth have been quite robust. So just because of RBI tightening, the deposit growth rate has been muted. I think once RBI can get the inflation down to the range which they have close to 4%. They're right now at the upper end of the band. I think we will see some rate cuts. Hopefully, that will improve liquidity. Hopefully, that will bring deposits back. As the institution itself, yes, we have a, long, a lot of work to do. We have done a lot of clean, uh, cleaning up. We have reduced our outflow rates by 550 basis points in the last two years. But we are right now going through a transformation. We're really trying to build a system and institutionalization of how do we do things on a day-to-day -day basis in every part of the bank. You talked about the RBI possibly cutting rates. When do you see that happening? I don't see it happening this year. Maybe it will happen early part of next year. Uh, I think the inflation still needs to come down. Uh, the food inflation is still uh, higher than what where you know, RBI would like it to be. And so obviously it feeds into a slightly higher inflation story. It has is coming under control slowly, gradually. But I think I don't think we're going to see interest rate cuts this year. We talked about retail exuberance, consumer exuberance. Is that a cause for concern? And when does it become a red flag for you? See, in, any kind of exuberance is not good for a risk-taking business, and we are in the risk-taking business. So in that sense, uh, just this desire to grow could lead to a situation where bank, banks start lending money to every sector, every customer segment, even to segments which are not necessarily creditworthy, and that could lead to the wrong kind of exuberance and lead to uh, loan losses. I think the Reserve Bank, our regulator, is very clearly indicating that they're worried about the exuberance. They've added risk weights to uh, you know, all kinds of loans, which means that the cost of lending has gone up, the uh, you know, capital requirements have gone up and it's a clear indication to the market that slow down uh, and RBI is not the only tool which RBI is available to itself. RBI has many had number of tools mm. which they can use to give an even more clear signal to the market that if you don't bring down the growth rates we'll take further action. So I think 
Uh, they're just trying to see at the credit growth rate and the deposit growth rate, and they're seeing that both ultimately need to converge over a period of time. And in some specific sectors, especially loans to small, uh, you know, up to 50,000 rupees, they do want, they're seeing NPL rates which are much higher than expected and do want to be taken care of. RBI says slow down, but it is not slowing down. What could be the next move from the RBI? Well, RBI has taken a step very recently only. So I think you will see the impact of this come through. Uh, in the results in this particular quarter and the next quarter. I don't think you will see this exuberance continuing at the same level as before. Uh, and frankly, if RBI, because RBI is not getting data on a quarterly basis, they're getting data on a daily basis, if they feel that the numbers are not stacking up, they will take action. And as I said, you know, uh, we have a very, very smart, proactive regulator. Uh, they have been, if you read what the governor has been saying, and I think he's saying it very openly, you don't even have to read between the lines. I think the message is quite clear. In terms of M&As for um, Axis Bank, are there plans in the next 12, 24 months? Well, what well, would make sense? Well, you know, anything which adds to our deposit franchise, anything which adds to our subsidies gaining scale, anything which adds to some of our businesses which have the high, you know, risk adjusted return on capital where we could gain scale does make sense. We have just, you know, completed the Citibank acquisition, which is one of the largest acquisitions in the country. Uh, in middle of this year, we will shift from Citibank technology to access technology. So in a way, the transaction is not fully done, at least from our perspective and for our customers, who were customers of City earlier. So we need to absorb this. We need to get the full benefit out of it. Uh, so we will be very, very careful about looking at acquisitions, but never say no and never say never. But I don't see today where I stand that any transaction is going to happen in a hurry. If the price is right. Price is right, but, you know, right now, look at the equity markets in India. Where is the price right? Uh, so in that sense, um, as I said, I keep uh, to the same statement that I don't think anything is happening. You've led the bank for five years. You have been credited for cleaning up the bank. What do you think is the best achievement for you, and what could you have done better? So obviously, you talked about the asset quality. That was important. I think another thing which we did when I at least came in was we announced what we call a growth, profitability, and sustainability strategy, and we put our kind of, you know, uh, put a hand out there and said we'll make 18% ROE. Uh, I think we're stuck to that strategy. Our articulation of what we want to do, how we will go about it, has been consistent and we have built on that over a period of time. And that story is clear internally and externally, which allows our investors and as our employees to be able to relate to something. I think that's the second thing we did. Third, invested in technology a lot. We were slightly behind in technology, so the amount of, I mean, we're the first bank to announce a digital banking unit. We are now 2,400 people there. The kind of work they have done is quite incredible. We have the best rated mobile app in the world now. So a lot of work in technology in terms of our architecture, about some of the platforms that we have created, and how we envision the world of digital banking in three to five years at that time, and how we are continuing to do that as we move forward. Fourth, I think just a dose of aspiration and ambition in our employees. I think somewhere they started thinking that you know, we are good where we are at, and I think uh, at least when I came in, I said, no, I'm not here to remain where we are. I'm here to take it to the next level. And I think just, just infusing that dose was very, very important. Uh, we have done that. I mean, uh, you asked me whether we could do anything better. Everything could be done better. At the end of the day, I'm quite well known in the bank for saying that my job is to look at glass half full, half empty, sorry. And okay. I'll keep looking at that all the time. So I will keep looking at things and saying, what could we do better? And in everything, there's always potential to do better.